Now, it's been an incredible uh, couple of weeks for the hundreds of people who've been impacted by the post office scandal. The Prime Minister Rishi Sunak announced that the government will bring in a new law to swiftly exonerate and compensate victims. Some people have been campaigning for decades for justice. Uh, we're joined now by Alan McLaughlin, who's a former sub-postmaster who had a fraud conviction quashed, and Michael Madden, who's a solicitor representing more than 20 people from here who've been caught up in the scandal. Uh, morning morning to you both. Um, Alan, morning. I, I spoke to you on uh, on Monday morning, and um, right, yep. we, 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 had a, we had a good chat. Uh, I'm just wondering how you feel this morning as, a, as another week has developed, and, and, and this seems to, this whole story just seems to have been turbocharged. I mean, as you sit and watch this, as someone who was, you know, in, in the eye of the storm, I'm, I'm just wondering how you feel about all this this morning. Well, I think um, the turnaround from uh, two weeks ago, in other words, before the ITV program aired, has been absolutely incredible. Uh, the momentum has been building, and I think finally, certainly, the the, the statements from Sunak and the government um, really appeared to 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 give the impression and confirm that things are going to happen for people who are still stuck basically in a quagmire which the, the, the post office has created and which was continuing to impede any progress on appeals or on compensation. What have you made of, of the evidence that you've been hearing in, in, in recent days, particularly from Stephen Bradshaw, who was the, the ex-post office investigator, um, and and he has been denying claims that he and his colleagues, when they were investigating, were behaving like uh, mafia gangsters towards wrongly accused sub-postmasters. Well, I think it's been extraordinary, hasn't it? I mean, anyone watching that would have been absolutely fascinated to see, to hear the testimony of one of the, basically one of the foot soldiers of the post office inquisition, because that's what it was more like than anything to do than anything resembling a, a, a public body controlled by by the government. Um, yes, I mean people have been watching it, uh, the live streams of of the testimony, and really they're, they're just astonished at how these people uh, conducted themselves. I mean, you you had a sub postmaster who was was talking about her um, horrendous treatment. Uh, at, um, that the hands of, of this investigation and the, her claims were denied. But she told the inquiry that she was hounded with threatening phone calls. O on one occasion, she was called a bitch on one of those phone calls. She had to flee her home with her children. She and her children were abused and assaulted in the street. People were throwing things at them because of the shame that people believed that they had brought on their town. I mean, this was the lived experience for so many of these people. Yes, uh, um, exactly. I mean, it, it appears almost incredible that a, a publicly funded body working within a, a, the framework of the powers invested in it used those in such an aggressive and, and well, almost vindictive way way uh i think what's extraordinary as well too is it is as we're probably going to see over the next several weeks um many of these people conducting uh these these investigations and prosecutions they've really very little idea of um the rules and the law in respect of um investigations interviews the rights of witnesses um basically nothing they, they essentially uh, conducted themselves in a in, in in a way that um, you know you know th 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 they felt appropriate or the, and without any uh, apparent kind of uh, restraint. Yeah, and, and, just a, and people people on, on the receiving end of that, of course, felt incredibly isolated. I think that's what we need to remember about what happened at that time. You just felt alone. They received virtually no support from any other source at that time. They were on their own, and they all felt that they were completely uh, the only person this was happening to, etc. And, and Michael Madden, I mean, the, the, the BBC revealing this morning that in the period leading up to the broadcast, uh, the Panorama programme in, in 2015 on, on this particular particular issue, um, trouble at the post office, the BBC uh, revealing that in that period, 
um, the, they were misled and and basically told um, a, a series of lies. The experts that were interviewed by the BBC were sent intimidating letters by the post office lawyers as well about their participation in the programme. Senior post office managers briefed the BBC that neither staff nor Fujitsu, uh, the company that built and maintained the system, could remotely access sub-postmasters' accounts, even though post office directors had been warned four years earlier that the access was possible. And lawyers for the post office sent letters threatening to sue Panorama and, and the company's public relations boss, Mark Davies, escalated complaints to ever more senior BBC managers. Uh, and it, it seems that um, documents would, would go on to prove um, that uh, this small victory, as it was seen by the post office, was celebrated by senior management. Uh, Paula Venels, the then chief executive at the time, congratulating Mark Davies and his PR team on their extensive work. I mean, th this kind of highlights the lengths to which they were going to to ensure that these people weren't going to be vindicated. Well, you can just imagine if that if they're the types of threatening and bullying tactics that were taken against the BBC. Uh, you can just imagine the effect, the the the, the chilling effect that would have on post sub so postmasters, normal working, hard working people who have been brought along to small small rooms uh, and have been sat down with these these investigators, interrogators, and the similar type threat threats and, and bullying tactics. Um, you can just imagine that the chilling effect that has had and, and devastation that has had on, on, on people and their and their lives. Uh, and and the frightening thing about the whole thing is that they nearly got away with it. They they the, the people that are coming forward to me now are are, uh, are telling me things that they have never told people uh, told anybody uh, and they've had kept it with them for twenty years and uh, on a professional level I hear and and what what people are telling me and I'm trying to find legal remedies for people but on a human level it, it's 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 very difficult uh, sometimes to to hear uh, what people have gone through and, and have held with them for so long. Um, Stephen Bradshaw, who we referenced, the, the, the ex-Post Office investigator, I mean, in his evidence yesterday, he, he was taking a position to say, well, you know, I, I had no reason at the time to suspect that anything was wrong with the Horizon system, basically because I wasn't told that by anything, uh, anyone else. I mean, is that good enough for you? Or are you thinking, you know, if so many of these cases are developing, somebody somewhere should have been saying, even Stephen Bradshaw himself, hang on a second here, this looks like more than coincidence. I, I, any right-thinking person wouldn't think that that's acceptable. Uh, I mean, it just isn't uh, acceptable to say, uh, I was following orders, um, and my bosses didn't tell me. Uh, th these investigators had large caseloads. Uh, they, they would have seen uh, the, the stories that are coming through to the inquiry, coming through to the media, people are telling the same stories, the same patterns. These investigators would have encountered the same thing. So it would have been plainly obvious that uh, there, there were issues there. People had raised it, like Alan, for example, uh, who was absolutely adamant. And <laughs> Alan is an absolutely remarkable man, as you know. And uh, he was one of the very few who just didn't accept that it was his problem or... Uh, it was somebody stealing from him. He he was very confident in, in himself, confident in his, in his abilities, confident in the people that worked for him, and he knew it was the computer system from from the very start. So people like Alan were raising this. It was raised, and the fact that all these people were being told the same thing: you're the only one. Uh, it's not the computer system. That there has to be some sort of central pattern because it was a, it was a script, and that script had to be written by somebody. Um, so th there there's no doubt that. And people like the investigators and and at the top must have known that there were issues from from a very mm. very early stage. Well, it's still be interesting uh, as we follow the inquiry and uh, and what else emerges. Um, but that that story in reference to what I was talking about, um, th those claims about what the. Uh, the, the journalists on the Panorama programme were told. You can see that story on the BBC website this morning. Uh, Alan McLaughlin, uh, Michael Madden, thank you both very much. 